Hey everyone, Kevin here. What I'd like to do in this video is talk about overclocking your GPU, your graphics card, and talk about why you would do it. Now, I will be talking about this from a gaming perspective a little bit, but I'll also be talking a lot about the mining perspective and why miners want to overclock, but underpower. So, as far as overclocking goes, why would you do it? Well, if you take a graphics card, and these are the ones that I've got, this is a 1080 Ti, this is a 1060 6 gigabyte. These cards run at different core speeds. They've got different uh, memory clock speeds as well. Now, these come out of the box to find that they can do a certain, you know, a certain speed, certain performance. But you can actually tweak those. You can reduce power. You can increase power. And manufacturers tend to follow Nvidia's guidelines and AMD's guidelines as far as what the clock speed and all that can do. But out of the box, companies will allow you to push that a little bit further. And the one that I've got here, the Aces one I've got, is actually an overclock edition, which is, I mean, it's designed for overclocking. And, well, what does overclocking do? Well, it, it gives you better performance. If, um, for example, say I've got my 1080 Ti. I've got it here. Um, and say I'm gaming. Say I've got the latest Call of Duty or FIFA or whatever, and I'm getting 80 frames per, per second, 60 frames per second, whatever it would be. Uh, an easy number, 100 frames per second in a game using the stock settings. If I had to overclock it, maybe put it 110% power, maybe put the core clock up 200 megahertz, um, I could maybe see the, the frame rate going from 100 frames per second to 110, 120. Now, the performance jump you get, sometimes it's not that big, but sometimes it is quite significant and it can really make a, a difference to, you, to the performance that you get in a game. Or not even just a game, you know, like uh, if you're mining, you can make more money. If you're uh, rendering something on, on, on like Adobe Premiere Pro and, and you're encoding a video. See, I'm recording a video for YouTube and I'm rendering the video using this graphics card. If I had overclocked the graphics card, it could be the difference between a video taking 10 minutes to render and 8 minutes. Because I'm getting more performance from this card. So that is why a lot of people... Uh, I was going to say most people, but I would say that's why most people um, overclock their GPU. So from a, a, I'll switch over to my monitor now. Again, you're seeing the left-hand side of my monitor because I've got a 34-inch widescreen. Um, what you're seeing in the left-hand side here, you're seeing my mining. This is actually from NiceHash because I'm not mining through this PC right now through Awesome Miner because, well, I'm recording. So I'll put that away just now. Uh, what you're seeing here, MSI Afterburner. Now, this is used to tweak your GPU. You can use this to change the settings of your graphics card. Now, there, there are alternatives. The first one I used was Asus GPU Tweak 2. And it's, I don't know, it's better in some ways, but I would say that it's just too buggy. I was finding it was crashing a lot. It was always kind of unstable, and I've just found MSI Afterburner to be a better solution. I don't like the interface. You can change the interface, but all the designs of the interface are kind of, my opinion, kind of childish. They're all colourful, and yeah, I just don't like them. But anyway, this can be used to overclock uh, your GPU, and you can get more performance from your um, from your graphics card. So... <clears throat> The settings I've got just now are actually set up for mining, but if I change to this profile, right, so this is the power limit. Power limit is 100%, the core clock plus zero, plus zero, and then the fan is auto, so it's at 52%, but I could, if I wanted to, manually put that up or down, if I wanted to. Um, so here is plus zero, but I could take some off the clock, and I could put some on. Now, a word of warning, a word of warning. When you're... Um, Get that back to zero. In fact, I'll just push that down there. A word of warning. When you are uh, tweaking your GPU, you need to be aware that if you go too high, your system will crash. That's just the nature of things. Um, if you're trying to get too much performance out of a card, it will crash and you'll need to restart your computer. Now, it can be a little bit of a pain this because the best way, the optimal way to find the sweet spot for your computer is to just increase things gradually. For example, say I wanted to find the best performance from this card. I might put up the core clock by, you know, by like 50 or so, and then put this up by like, say, 100 or so. 
and then I would save it. I would test things out, see how it performed. Fine. Okay, let's see if we can get some more. Put another 50 in the core clock, maybe another 100 or so in the memory clock. We'll see how it performs. And you keep doing that, but it won't be long until your system crashes. When that happens, you go back on, you remember the, the settings that you had, and go to where you had it before, but just dial it back a little bit so that you've got something that's stable. Um, <clears throat> from You'll see here the power limit. So if you're a gamer, you've probably got this at 100%. Or even like 105, 110%. Um, and if you assume the 1080 Ti is, you know, is taking 250 watts, if you're going to push it to 110, uh, 110, then well, you're going to take another 10% or 25 watts. So you're generating more electricity, more power, and that's going to give you better performance because you can push the clock higher. Now, you you probably noted before, probably noticed that I had the power limit 72%. So why would I buy a graphics card like this and put it down to 72% power? Well, it's all about finding that sweet spot, finding the optimal setup for your graphics card. And the optimal set setup for your graphics card is different for every card. It really is. Now, part of that is the card in question. You know, how I set that up, uh, I've got this one set up at 82% power. How I set that up is different to how I set this one up, different cards. But even within the same cards, you will find slight variations. Um, there's some cards that I've got these and they perform better than others. It's the silicon lottery, that's what my friend was saying. It really is down to the silicon, I don't know why I'm saying that, silicon lottery. Um, so there are slight variations as to um, how you, how much you get out of a card. It's, it can be a little bit of a lottery, just as you know what came out that came out of um, the warehouse and, and got delivered to you. So, from a mining perspective, you you noted there that the power limit was down, and and that's something that miners want. Gamers want performance at all costs, and they don't care. You know, if it's a little bit extra in electricity, if you're only playing a game for a few years, it's not really an issue. But for miners, they're putting on graphics cards for twenty four hours a day. They want performance but they want it at the lowest cost possible because running a computer 24 hours a day electricity is one of your biggest costs now if you are a miner and you have you know you don't pay for your electricity i don't know why maybe a government scheme maybe you're some you know you're rich or something i don't know if maybe you've got a solar solar panel set up if you don't pay for the electricity then what you would do is do the same as gamers and just overclock this Put the power to like 100%, 105, 110%. Get as much power out of the card as you can and get the, the best performance. But for most people, they have to pay for the electricity. And, you know, it depends. I think the average in America is like 15 cents per kilowatt hour. In the UK, it's about 15 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, and, you know, that means for every 1,000 watts per hour, you will pay 15 cents or 15 pence. And, you know, when you've got a lot of cards... It can be, uh, it can add up to be a, a lot of money. You could be paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars or pounds every month for your electricity. And the key thing here is, you, you know, what what miners are trying to do. If I jump back here, what miners are trying to do is get the best performance with the lowest amount of electricity. So what you you can see here, what I've done here, I've got the power at seventy two percent. I've got the core clock one hundred eighteen above zero plus 118 and I've got the memory clock plus 309. Now I'm, I'm getting quite a stable performance from this. Now if I, you know, like the default setting for this 100, if I had to set this up and I put it like 380, maybe I, maybe I could go up to like, like that and you know, go up really high like that. Now I might be able to do that at 100% and if I did that, see these hash rates down the side, which um, you will see on Awesome Miner. So if I if, if I take a rig for example and you'll see whatever algorithm I'm doing nice hash actually equihash, um, I'm getting 311, 209. So they're all about 300. If I had to change the power rating and I changed it from these cards are on 80%, put them up to 90%, I might see my rates go from 300 up to 320, 330. Uh, and by doing that, I'm going to make more money. But I'm also going to um, get that out of the way. I'm also going to 
uh, I'll get more hash rates, but I'm also going to use up more electricity. So that there is a balance because you want to get the, the performance, the best performance you can. But as far as where that sweet, sweet spot is, well, it depends on many factors. You know, you might want it to keep electricity, the power limit low, regardless, just simply because of heat. But most people, the the, the sign factor is the electricity cost or the um, or the the actual rate that they're mining. If you're if if the rate if the increased rate of mining is higher than the increased rate of power, then you're as well just putting the power up. But it is a uh, hard to find. You know, you need to find that sweet spot, and and the, and the the setup is the same as. Um, as it is, we'll get it here. The, the, how you how you do this for mining is the same kind of principle as what you would do with a graphics card. You put you put the core clock up, you put the power down, you put the memory clock up. Is it stable? Are the hash rates good? Good. Okay, we'll put the power limit down a little bit more. We maybe put the core clock up. Is it stable? No, the system's crashed. Right. Okay, we can't do that. Back to the drawing table. It takes a lot of time to do this, and it is very annoying to do it, but. You kind of need to do it. You can get a head start by, you know, typing in the name of your graphics card and typing in optimal settings for gaming or for mining. And that will give you a base point of roughly where you should be to get the optimal setup. But again, it comes down to what you're paying for electricity, your hash rates, and how much more extra money you're making. If if you get an extra, say, $100 a month by putting the power up and it's only going to cost you an extra $50 in electricity, then it makes sense to do that. But there are other factors to consider. One being um, lifespan. You know, when you underpower graphics cards, you you know you're you're not putting as much you're not putting them under as much pressure. You're not running them as as hard, and that should transfer into longer lifespans. But I don't. I think these graphics cards are designed to be used for years, so it shouldn't be a major problem. Now, there's one thing in the the settings area there that I've not spoke about yet, and that is this here core voltage now by default by default msi doesn't activate this as you can see it's not it's, it's displayed there but i can't pick it what i need to do let's go here under voltage control select it oh i need to restart it right so I, I won't do that just now because i um no yeah i'll restart it under volt control so i'm going to switch this off and then i'll switch it back on hopefully this is this going to load up? Hopefully it does. Ah, live recordings, eh? Right, where are we? That's the remote server. Come on, launch, launch. Right, yes, right. So now I've got core voltage control up. I can put the voltage up. Now, the... That's the 100. So you can put the, the, the core voltage down, right? And that, this is something that I was I was confused about, uh, and it's something that clearly a lot of other people are confused about because, for the research for this video, I, I looked I looked at a lot of videos to to get an understanding of what's the difference between power limit and core voltage, and there's a lot of people there who are explaining it and they don't have a clue about what, what they're talking about. I spoke to my friend Mark about it, and I spoke to Donny, who's a subscriber to my channel, um, and he explained it, you know, in, in a good way, and it, it basically undervolting means that you're sending less power to the card in the first place and um, he says that the manufacturer needs to set a voltage in the bios that 100 percent of the cards will work with so they set a, a safe they set a safe limit for the voltage so for example this card at 100 percent will work you know it'll perform just as expected 100 percent of the time but if you had to send 90 percent of the voltage there it could still perform exactly the same with only 90% of the voltage. Again, it's the silicon lottery. You, you know, the same card and a, and a different card might not work like that. And that's where it becomes a little bit difficult. Um, but, you know, un undervolting seems to be more popular with AMD cards. But um, he was saying, my friend was saying that it does seem to be specific to certain cards. Some of them you'll get more performance with less volts. But as far as the power limit does... Um, you know, the power limit is the, my understanding of it is more like the, the software is controlling it more. But if I bring up, um, where is it? Uh, GPU Z. Now in GPU Z, you can download that free charge. There is a power consumption there, and you can see that I'm only using twenty three percent, which makes sense. I'm just recording. I'm not doing anything strenuous. So I'm not. If this card goes to two hundred fifty watts, 
I'm only using like 25% of that, 23% of that. Now, as far as the difference between a uh, voltage and, and power limit, which what you should use, if you overvolt your graphics card, you can you can seriously damage the lifespan of it. But if you're mining and you're undervolting, well, you can lead into a lot of other problems. Again, you'll get system crashes and you've got all these other problems. Is what my understanding of it is, and I admittedly I'm not an expert on this subject, but my understanding of it is that basically is better not to use the voltage control unless you have a complete understanding of this and you have the time to test every single card and for me i would rather just keep keep things using the power limit uh, and let msi after burner control it that way so I, I think i've explained it badly there so i do apologize but i would say that for most people just using the power limit is enough for miners, you know, as far as reducing your power um, and getting the, increasing the clock and getting the most performance from it. But again, silicon lottery, I could undervolt this card. Um, say, say my card is 100 watts and I'm running at 72 watts right now. If I had to undervolt it to 90%, then I could, you know, reduce it from 72 right into like 60 odds. And I would get the exact same performance. Now that is something I could do, but I might find that some cards undervolt better than others. And when you've got several GPUs and a rig, it becomes a little bit of a pain. I might look into this more, but for the time being, I'm quite happy just using the power limit option on MSI Afterburner. If you've got a better explanation of this, please do leave a comment below. But from what I've read online, um, if you, it just seems easier to use the power limit unless you want to do a huge amount of testing and even then you can cause things to be unstable if you're not sending enough volts to the card that's my understanding of it but as i said msi after burner and for a tip here a uh, gpu z will give you a lot of information so if you're overclocking if you're underclocking if you're underpowering whatever you're doing download gpu z it's free to download and it will give you a huge amount of information about your cards and it can help you point you in the right direction oh look there's an update in fact, if I click update, you will see exactly where you get it from. There you go. You get it from techpower techpowerup.com. So that's where you get it from. Very, very easy to use. So guys, the, the general principle of uh, overclocking is that you're trying to get more performance from your graphics card. Whether that be um, for gaming or whether that be for mining, the principle is the same. That you want to increase the settings and make sure that everything is stable. Uh, and if it's not stable, your screen might go a little bit crazy, it'll be flashing different colours, it might just crash and freeze and you'll need to restart the computer. But it's kind of necessary if you want to push to the to the point where it is optimal. For miners, miners, you know, for gamers, they just kind of increase it, increase it. Okay, it's not working, I'll dial it back. For miners, there's a little bit more in it because you want to uh, give less power. But you need to take into hash rates into account. You need to take the, the rates of those hash rates. You know, how much are you earning per day? Is it more than the extra electricity you would spend? So you need to take all that into consideration. So if you've got any other advice, if you've got, you guys have got any advice that you want to share with anyone below about this subject, if you want to clarify the the voltage and power limit, um, because I, I know I've not done a, a great explanation of that. If you want to clarify that, um, please do leave a comment below. I'll leave a link to some Gamers Nexus videos where he explains undervolting better than I can. Um, and you can, you know, re look into the subject more. But for now, thanks for watching. Please do leave a comment and let me know what you think about this subject. And if you've enjoyed the video, please do consider liking or sharing. Until next time, take care.